for mechanical engineering. My topic is about deep learning for radio frequency systems. Deep learning in a radio frequency shows promise for dealing with a contested spectrum by actually relevant and simplified the text of building world system. Deep learning signals it excuse a software defined radio time that can perform real time in deep learning when embedded GPU and an analog device front end. With this Q system performance training of our data software so used to deploy algorithms and take update life into one application. And I present a video about the deep learning for segments. Deep learning continues, continues to gain popularity, to gain popularity in, signal in signal processing with applications, with applications such, as such as voice assistants, voice assistants digital, digital health, health and, radar and radar and wireless communications. With MATLAB, with MATLAB you can easily develop deep learning models and build real-world smart signal processing systems. Let's take a closer look at the four steps involved. The first step in building a deep learning model is to access and manage your data. Using MATLAB, you can acquire signals from a variety of hardware devices. You can also generate synthetic data via simulation or use data augmentation techniques if you don't have enough data to begin with. MATLAB simplifies the process of accessing and working with signal data that is either too large to fit in memory or if you have large collections of signal data. Once the data is collected and ready, it's now time to interpret the signal data and label it. You can quickly visualize and analyze your signals using the Signal Analyzer app as a starting point. You can label signals with attributes, regions, and points of interest, and use domain-specific tools to label all your signals to prepare your data for training. There are two main approaches for performing deep learning on signals. The first approach involves converting signals into time frequency representations and training custom convolutional neural networks to extract patterns directly from these representations. A time frequency representation describes how spectral components in signals evolve as a function of time. This approach enhances the patterns that may not be visible in the original signal. There are a variety of techniques for generating time frequency representations from signals and saving it as images, including spectrograms, continuous wavelet transforms or scalograms, and constant Q transforms. The second approach involves feeding signals directly into deep networks, such as LSTM networks. To make the deep network learn the patterns more quickly, you may need to reduce the signal dimensionality and variability. To do this, you have two options in MATLAB. You can manually identify and extract features from signals, or you can automatically extract features using invariant scattering convolutional networks, which provide low variance representations without losing critical information. Once you select the right approach for your signals, the next step is to train the deep networks, which can be computationally intensive and can take anywhere from hours to days. To help speed this up, MATLAB supports training on single or multiple NVIDIA GPUs on local machines or cloud-based systems. You can also visualize the training process to get a sense of the progress long before it finishes. Finally, you can automatically generate optimized CUDA code for your signal pre-processing algorithms and deep networks to perform inference on embedded GPUs. To learn more about our deep learning capabilities, check out mathworks.com. We have a large collection of examples to help you get started. Signal processing definitions. Signals can be broadly defined as a medium for transmitting information from one place to another. 
saying other process in his concern with the manipulation of signals to slot embedded information to achieve a certain goal. Okay, it is a video about the difference between analog and digital time. Difference between analog and digital. Analog signal is a continuous signal which represents physical measurements. Digital signals are discrete time signals generated by digital modulation. Analog is denoted by sine wave, whereas digital is denoted by square waves. Analog signal uses continuous range of values to represent information. Digital signal uses discrete or discontinuous values to represent information. Analog technology records waveforms as they are. Samples analog waveforms into a limited set of numbers and records them. Analog is subjected to deterioration by noise during transmission and write, read cycle. Digital can be noise immune without deterioration during transmission and write, read cycle. Analog is more likely to get affected reducing accuracy. Digital is less affected since noise response are analog in nature. Analog hardware is not flexible. Digital hardware is flexible in implementation. Can be used in analog devices only. Best suited for audio and video transmission. Best suited for computing and digital electronics. Application of analog is thermometer. Whereas application of digital RPCs, PDAs, analog signal processing can be done in real time and consumes less bandwidth. There is no guarantee that digital signal processing can be done in real time and consumes more bandwidth to carry out the same information. Analog is stored in the form of wave signal. Digital is stored in the form of binary bit. Analog instruments usually have a scale which is cramped at lower end and give considerable observational errors. Digital instruments are free from observational errors like parallax and approximation errors. That's all. Still have any doubts? Ask in comments below. Subscribe now for more videos. Now, I uh, about radio frequency data. Road, a radio frequency signal data is complex value and traditional split into the in phase and quadrupter channels. Complex data can be represented in multiple domains and typically represent time and frequency in varying features. Another video about radio frequency signal capture using my lab insert. This video shows you how to capture RF waveforms off the air using MathWorks toolboxes and SDR connectivity. This is accomplished using the capture method, which can be used to return data from the hardware to the, Mat the MATLAB workspace and or directly to a file. First, I will make a recording of the FM broadcast spectrum directly to a file using any supported SDR platform. In this case, I will use Pluto Radio. Then, I will capture an LTE frame to the MATLAB workspace for analysis with the LTE toolbox. In this case, I will use an ETIS E310 as the SDR platform. Let's start by configuring my attached hardware and setting up an SDR receiver object to receive RF data off the air. Looking at the receiver properties, I will set the center frequency to the middle of the FM broadcast spectrum and the baseband sample rate to the maximum value. Next, I will call the capture method on my receiver object. I specify the capture length and units. I also specify a file name, which will be used to store the captured data. Later, I decide to process the captured data. I create a baseband file reader system object and pass it the name of my generated baseband file. I pass the output from the baseband file reader into the spectrum analyzer to render the data.
In the spectrum analyzer, I can observe peaks in the frequency domain. These correspond to local FM broadcast stations. Next, I will capture an LTE frame off the air into the MATLAB workspace. I start by identifying a nearby antenna before setting up an SDR receiver object in MATLAB with the appropriate center frequency. I then call the capture function, setting the capture length to the duration of a single LTE frame. The capture method returns the data as an output and, once returned, I utilize the LTE toolbox to find the physical cell identifier. The functionality I have shown here is available in three different support packages for Xilinx Sync based radio hardware, analog devices Pluto Radio, and Etis Research E310 and E312. The support packages are free downloads based on the communications toolbox. To find these support packages, you can search for MATLAB SDR in your favorite search engine. The MATLAB and SDR page should be at or near the top. On the page, you can find out more details on the support packages shown in this video, or some of our other support. Applied in the Ecuador. Application, uh, we have the detection, geolocation, amplifying and filtering, and MITR tracking. In video is about the applications in the radio frequency systems. in discovery, early warning system for defense and commercial applications, enforce uh, and FCC regulations, and cause a uh, high noise, high interference environment. Is a video uh, and uh, represent the training hertz to 20,000 uh, 20, hertz and human audio spectrum. Is caution for the police.
And finally, the conclusion. Historically, most popular demand for radio frequency deep learning research discourses face information and is most effective as signal identification, makes use of a center image domain network, and is a candidate for transfer learning. Demand uh, that the signal for brain is unique and easily separate from the radio frequency environment by an experienced operator, candidate for match segmentation techniques. Uh, thanks for your attention. Bye.